Hi all. Today let's take a look at a small package within the NGRX ecosystem that is the NGRX component which mainly interacts with the view. So in order to get started first we need to add the package within our dependencies of the package.json. So here I have done that. That is the NGRX slash component library. So this is still in experimental mode. The NGRX component package, it contains mainly two modules. So one module is the let module, which basically allows us to directly bind observables to our template. So this is quite similar to the async pipe, which we have in Angular, which basically does the same thing. But the let directive, what it does is it allows a bit more processing under the hood, like it provides us with more control in how we can handle these observables within the template. So let's go to a simple example. So here in our Angular application, we have an observable number, which basically is a timer and it emits a value every one second. And we take the first three values which are emitted from that observable. This observable we are directly binding to our template and here we are making use of the ng if along with the async pipe and here the value we are assigning to an alias variable and here we are just displaying the value. Now let's see what happens when we do this. So when we refresh our application you can see that initially the value 0 is emitted but at that time as you can see there is nothing displayed in the template. But when the value becomes positive, that is 1 and 2, it gets displayed in the template. This is because the ng if basically checks for a truthy value and since 0 is a falsy value, it will not display the particular value 0. Basically the same thing we will be able to achieve by making use of the let directive so this is the syntax for the let directive. So we can provide it as a structural directive. And the syntax is quite similar to the ngif itself. And you can see that we can directly assign the observable and provide a variable. We can bind it similar to the previous ngif example. So let's refresh our application. So here one difference you can see that the let directive what it does is even though the initial value which is emitted is 0 which is a falsy value even that value will be displayed properly in our template. Main difference between the ng if and the let directive is that the let directive displays the falsy value that is even if it emits a value of 0 the value will be displayed in the template. Similarly we have a second syntax where we can provide the observable name and we can declare a variable using the let keyword. So again, this works exactly similar to the previous example. When we refresh, you can see that the false value 0 is displayed and it emits the next two values as well. So what is the advantage of using the let directive over the normal ng if async combo? So as you saw earlier, in our example, we take only the initial three values from our observable and after that we basically complete that observable. So currently in the ngif async combo, there is no option to determine when the observable has completed or even when an error is thrown. We won't be able to handle that in a straightforward manner. But the let directive, it provides an option in which we will be basically able to assign the error if any error occurs within our observable to a variable and similarly the completion of the observable also we will be able to assign to a variable and based on this variable we will be able to show different templates within our program. So here what I have given is I have declared a let directive with the number observable and I am assigning the error to E and completion to C variables 
and here I am checking like if both E and C are not available that is the observable is still active and either not in error state or completed then we will be displaying the value and in case if it is an error we will be displaying the error and in case the observable is completed we will be displaying that message so in the current example we are just completing the observable after taking the three values so let's refresh so here you can see that after the three values we get the message that the observable is completed so now let's modify the ts code in such a way that we will be throwing an error instead of completing the observable so here i am checking whether the value is 5 and in case it is 5 we are throwing an error invalid and similarly in the html i have commented out all the remaining templates and only this particular div will be available so let's refresh and you can see that the counter started and when it reaches 5 you can see that the error is thrown and that particular error is being captured within our template directly by making use of the let directive which basically allows us to capture the error in the template another feature provided by the let directive is that we will be able to show some messages while the async observable is getting loaded so this is similar to the suspense feature we have in react where we will be able to display some template while the asynchronous action is in progress so here what we can do is we are going to add an ng template here which is assigned to a template reference variable loading and it just displays the text loading now within our let directive we can add the suspense tpl that is the key in which we can assign the variable that is a loading variable here and while the observable is getting initialized this particular template will be displayed so let's try that so let's refresh our application initially you can see that the loading is shown and after that the value starts getting emitted And once the three values are emitted, the observable is completed. Another feature of the let directive is that in case we have some deeply nested values within our application. So in this case, I have a user data within which I have the PA, that's the person information. And within that I have the first name or last name. So this data is nested within three levels. So when we bind it to the template, Basically, we use it in a dot format. So, repeating this dot format multiple times within the template, it can be difficult to maintain. So, the let directive, what it does is, it allows us to define a variable or an alias so that this particular alias we will be able to use within our templates. So, here in this sample, I have renamed the complex f name as first name. And I am using that variable within the template. So if you go to our application, you can see that the first name is getting displayed here. Now let's take a look at the second module which is available in the NGRS component. That is the push module. So this module basically contains a pipe called the NGRX push. So this pipe is quite similar to the async pipe. But the only difference is that the async pipe will not work in case of a zoneless application that is in case we remove zone js from our angular application the async pipe will not work properly but the ngrx push pipe it will operate both in the zone version as well as the zoneless version of our application so let's see this in action so currently our application is a zone based application so when we run our application you can see that the async pipe is working properly but Let's do one thing. Let's go to the polyfill and comment out the zone JS and also in the main.ts, that's the bootstrap module, we can provide the ng zone as no op. So basically, we are saying that the ng zone will be a dummy value 
and zone.js is not there in our application. So once we do that, you can see that the async pipe, it no longer works properly in our application and the value is not getting displayed. So here we can directly replace it with the ngrx push pipe and when we refresh our application, you can see that application is working as previously similar to the async pipe. So these are the two modules which are available within the ngrx component library. Hope you are able to get a good understanding about these modules. See you soon. Thank you.